Oh, Solana is dead. Oh my God, is Solana dead? <clears throat> is Solana dead? By now, we all know the story of how this once mighty ETH killer took a brutal Bankman free beating after the FTX collapse. But is it really over for Solana, or is there still some fight in this thing? What's going on everybody? My name is Frankie Candles and in this video, I'm gonna be doing a deep dive on Solana. So let's break it down. Solana Labs co-founder Anatoly Yakovenko, hopefully I didn't butcher that name, made headlines recently when he tweeted that he believes it's likely that Ethereum will become a layer two for Solana. This is a little bit ironic given that just a couple of days before, Vitalik tweeted that he feels badly about how Solana and other crypto projects have been treated by the SEC. Go ahead and hit that like button if you feel bad for all the Solana bag holders like me. Anyway, let's Let's break down what Solana actually is. Well, the short version is that Solana is a layer one smart contract platform that uses a unique consensus algorithm called proof of history to validate transactions. The way it's designed promotes high scalability, throughput, and speed above all else. Now, arguably this speed is really important, but it could also come at the cost of decentralization and security, something that the blockchain trilemma poses as competing objectives for any blockchain ecosystem. In simple terms, if you wanna be as fast as Solana, you have to accept that there's going to be trade-offs, even if you have calf muscles as big as mine. If you guys appreciate the content, go ahead and smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our daily live streams or urgent market updates going into the next bull run. Now, it's no secret that Solana was a favorite project of Crypto Madoff and polyamorous soy boy Sam Bigman Freed. Not only were there a ton of other VC vultures heavily invested in Solana, but Sammy Solana, the Bahama Beach Boy, would often talk about the project like he was a hired spoke he even took to Twitter to defend the project when it experienced a ton of frequent outages in 2022. I think we all remember these. But alas, as we all know, FTX was all a big criminal enterprise essentially, and when it crashed, it dragged Solana down with it, along with my bag. And I mean hard. FTX and Alameda Research were holding a combined total of about 58 million soul, or 11% of the entire circulating supply at the time the FTX filed for bankruptcy. When the panic selling finally settled, Solana was left bing bonging around the $10 support zone at the beginning of 2023, with a downtrend that stretched all the way back to November 2021, when Solana was trading almost at $250. My thoughts and prayers go out to everybody who bought that top. But then in January 2023, the king of cryptos finally caught a bounce, and as Bitcoin climbed back over $17,000, the market turned cautiously bullish. Now, I cannot stress enough how huge this was for Solana. The once mighty altcoin benefited massively from this and racked up gains of 175% in 21 days before stalling out at the $26 to $28 resistance zone. Today, Solana is sitting at number nine on coin market cap with a market cap of just under $10 billion and a price of $24.60, which isn't too bad realizing that Solana dropped as much as it did. Now, there's a little bit of the brutal history, but what's the rest of the story? And what's still happening with Solana today? Are they still building? Have they completely died? Now, you guys know I'm not a dev, but Solana does have some pretty impressive tech. As I said, they're hyper-focused on the scalability piece of the blockchain trilemma. And as a result, Solana has such high performance that they claim to be enabling a new class of applications that were previously impossible. For example, an Oracle running on Solana could theoretically provide price feed updates once every 400 milliseconds. A decentralized exchange could then handle 30,000 price updates per second and settle on a price every 400 milliseconds. That's pretty impressive, no matter how you slice it. The Fire Dancer upgrade. <laughs> The Fire Dancer upgrade being developed on Solana backing Web3 VC firm Jump Crypto will increase Solana's speed to over 1 million transactions per second by introducing a next generation validator client. The upgrade is expected to arrive sometime in late 2023, according to the Jump Crypto website, and that's gotta be bullish no matter when they release it. Not only that, but by certain metrics, Solana hasn't had to sacrifice security in order to achieve this incredible throughput speeds and volumes. Masari published a report in June analyzing decentralization among different chains and gave Solana an aggregate Nakamoto coefficient of 1.9, higher than many of the competitors. I know everyone is going to jump all over me and mention all the outages that Solana had in 2022 as proof that it's centralized and not secure at all. You would kind of be right, but those incidences haven't really occurred in a long time and the ecosystem continues to grow either way. The Solana Labs team led by Anatoly also laid out a six part plan to improve the network in February of this year and has been hard at work implementing the plan already. A big 
think part of this is something they call DPIN or decentralized physical networks. The idea is to position Solana as the leader of a new physical internet of things, and the primary parts of the plan so far are Helium and Render Network migrating to Solana along with Saga, the famous Solana phone we all know about and probably will never use. Now, as you guys may know, Helium is a decentralized and distributed internet network of user-run nodes, and Render Network is a protocol for distributed GPU rendering. If you ask me, this strategy is a bit of a long shot, but I do have to admit it's a unique one. And if Solana pulls this off, they could be the blockchain underlying their own internet, rendering network, and Web3 phone. And that's just the beginning. Hard not to be bullish on that if it gains market adoption. Solana launched the Saga phone to much fanfare in April of 2023, but at a price point of $1,000, in my opinion, it's a little bit expensive. But another innovation that Solana rolled out recently is something called state compression. No, that's not a pun about people fleeing California. It's a cost-saving data storage solution that makes Solana even cheaper to use. If you want to know how it works, first off, you're a nerd. And second, you'll have to do your own research because I don't understand it. But I do know it's supposed to make it possible to mint 1 million NFTs on Solana for about $110. And that sounds mega bullish to me. Now, if all that isn't enough to convince you that there's still a lot of life left in Solana, then maybe this is something that will scare you into changing your mind. Solana has integrated with ChatGPT. Yep, that's right. I can't explain why, but something about that sentence makes me feel like Skynet just went live or like Agent Smith is about to jump out and drag me into the matrix. Anyway, they did it, God help us all. And now there's a plugin that will allow the AI chatbot to check wallet balances, transfer tokens, and even purchase NFTs. The plugin is open source and can be downloaded from GitHub and I'm hopeful it will only be used for good things. The Solana Foundation also announced that it would increase funding for grants exploring Solana and AI to $10 million and claims to have already received over 50 applications. I can't wait to see what they come up with, but whatever it is, it'll probably have a lot of life in it. Okay, wow. Sorry for the huge brain dump, but I think it's pretty clear that the squad over at Solana Labs have been very busy this bear market and have been rolling out developments, improvements, and innovations left and right. It looks to me like the project is still very much alive, but it's not clear yet just how much market share they're going to be able to capture in the next bull run. That's all going to come down to user adoption and market selection, but eventually we will find out if Anatoly is right and if Ethereum will become nothing more than a Solana layer 2, or if the curse of the crypto crime kid will taint Solana's reputation so badly that it eventually drives it into an early grave. RIP Solana and my Solana bags. That's all I got for this one, Candle Mafia, but what do you guys think? Is this too bullish of an outlook on Solana? Let me know down in the comments where you think Solana is going to end up in the next bull run and beyond. Oh, and by the way, has anyone ever used that Solana phone? Is it garbage? Let me know. And with all that being said, guys, that's all the time we got for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Frankie Candles out. Bing bong.